Next day, she's gonna, you're going to find the police at your door and they'll be like, oh, you know, you raped her. And you'll be like, what, honey, what happened? But I, I didn't tell you it's okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, this is your brother Gabriel Romani. And today's question is very sensitive. Marital rape in Islam. Before we get into it, please do consider to support our work. Check out our links in the description. Become a patron for as little as $3 a month. Check out my book, Journal of the New Muslim, and of course, the Muslim Alpha Man course. If you want to book a counseling session, you'll find it all in the description and the links, inshallah. So, marital rape in Islam. It's shocking to see that some brothers are a bit confused about this. Some brothers of knowledge who are doing dawah, talking about rape. And they'll say, well, when you sign the contract of marriage, that you agree that it is okay. I think they need to be careful in picking their words. I'm not sure if we're misunderstanding what they're saying, but I did see some concerning statements. See, Islam is based on principles, and no one can change that. And Allah tells us, فَأْتُوا بُرْحَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Just because you're married to someone does not necessarily give you certain you know, things or the ability or license to do certain things. For example, even when it comes to disciplining your wife, there are steps. You can just discipline because it turns from uh, something that's permissible by Allah to a sin or dhun that can end you up in hellfire. So Islam has specific steps even when it comes to discipline. So let's say someone skips the steps. The outcome, you can say, or the process, you can say, but it's the same thing. No, because you didn't go through the actual process. So it's like having the, the an arrow, the right arrow, but shooting the wrong target. You're like, oh, it's an error. Yeah, but you're shooting the wrong target. You understand? So these principles are put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be obeyed so that we do not do dhulm. And there's a principle in Sharia, la darara wa la dirar. There's no harm and no reciprocation of harm. Right? These are principles and foundations. So when people come and start saying things, it's very, very alarming because you got to be careful of are you saying it from your spitefulness or are you saying it from actually evidence of the sharia so is so-called marital rape let's understand the definition so what is marital marital is when two people are in a marital relationship nikah it's a contract it's a aqid and it's it's binding it has certain responsibilities and has certain rights now rape is the process of a person forcing themselves onto another person to enter to penetrate them sexually when that person doesn't want to okay do you understand and it involves violence and involves uh, hurting that person because obviously you have to if that person resists you and doesn't want to do it you're going to have to overpower them through strength right so there's a conflict there one wants one doesn't want and one is going to enforce and put force onto that person because he wants to and sometimes it's women raping men as well and don't be shocked and don't laugh because it happens is marital rape allowed in islam no because it violates the principles of islam so let's say scenario wise a man wants intimacy right he wants sex and the wife doesn't want to can he now go and grab her tie her slap her put her down pin her down and force himself into her no okay he cannot he cannot do that because what can he do well nothing in that case he can reprimand her and he can follow the steps of discipline because this is the shoes she has to give him the right if not the angels curse her to the morning which is obviously you can see the outcome of that it's a huge thing but knowing the hadith as you say well if she's not going to give it it says that the angels will curse her and he says that the hurlain actually call upon and they say that we're waiting for him but it doesn't say that he can pin her down and put it himself inside of her okay this is not permissible you let her be you advise her so the first thing is advice second one is actually leaving the bed and third one is the discipline in following the step skipping the steps it leads to that kind of knee-jerk reaction that kind of anger it leads to dhulm and dhulm dhulumat yawm al so you're now going from the permissible into the punishable by skipping the step you're jumping the horse as we say but you say, but it's the same, but I can, I can, I, no, you cannot, because Allah has given certain steps. You're not following the sharia. Some people used to say, will I be punished for doing this and this? And the scholars used to say, you'll be punished for going against the way of the Prophet wasallam. Even though it looks similar, but you're not following those things that the Prophet has told you 
to do. So raping means something specific. It involves certain violence, it involves a certain act, and it involves not having the actual to force yourself. Now we'll talk about the issue of consent, like because you know now today it's like you have to be like, I allow you to enter me and penetrate me. The consent for, for sexual intercourse is at the time of nikah. Now every time you're gonna have to say, Yeah, I consent, yeah, I consent, yeah, I consent. And if you don't, like you're just gonna, you know, maybe she's gonna be like, oh, I have a headache today, I don't feel and you kind of get into her. Come on, come on, come on. If finally you guys do it, next day she's gonna you're gonna find the police at your door and they'll be like, Oh, you know, you raped her. And you're like, what, honey, what happened? But I, I didn't tell you it's okay. Wait a second. Like, it's not like we elbowed each other and I pinned you down and I pushed myself through you. No, that's not rape. Some people get confused. But sadly, it has reached to that point where like, now it's like almost you have to have written consent. Yes, you can penetrate me tonight. Okay, now it's not counting as rape. Ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. I think people get confused between these two when it comes to so-called marital rape in Islam, that the woman has to give her consent all the time. No, the man, the man's intimacy, the woman should comply right away. If not, she'll get cursed by the angels. It's a big sin. The Prophet said, even if she's on top of the camel, even if she's on, t on uh, cooking, she should give in to the intimacy. Now, if she doesn't, okay, he should yeah, understand. She still can incur any problems. But if he understands and he says, Khalas, no problem, it's a different story, right? If he's upset, he can take the steps in you know, advising her. If he keeps repeating, because some women weaponize holding back sex because they have the key to it seduction and intimacy is with them so they will weaponize it if they don't like something about the man she'll use it against him she's gonna use it to get what she wants to manipulate him and that is incorrect that is dorm as well in haram the man has to advise her go through the steps not to hit her jump the horse uh, make dorm uh, you know kind of like a reactionary behavior reactionary behavior it's what leads to abuse spousal abuse, sexual abuse, and all that. Because abuse is a reaction out of anger. And the Prophet said, La taghdab. There's a difference, huge difference between that and discipline. Discipline is not like, we know, we, we're not gonna joke around. We know what the Quran says about discipline, about disciplining. It's clear about disciplining wives, okay? We know that the law is different in the countries that you live in, but we know we're not gonna joke about what the Quran says. But the issue of abuse that we are dealing with, this is what the West does. The type of knee-jerk reaction where it leads to breaking people's teeth and their faces and so on. That's what they do. Okay, we have our way that we have to follow. Okay, and that is to stop that knee-jerk reaction that leads to that abuse that can hurt someone. Because there's a difference. Discipline is done for the sake of Allah with steps, with not like anger and like just spitefulness and revenge. No, it's done as a form of following the orders of Allah in addressing a problem that's cause, causing major consequences. And yes, there's huge ramifications of a woman using sex as weaponizing it towards the husband and so on and so forth. Huge, huge problems that we're not going to get into it right now. But the outcomes can be disastrous for the marriage and for society at large. Right? So the Sharia, the maqasid of Sharia and higher objectives will protect the rights of the individual, but also the rights of the society. People are confused about this marital rape. So it's not about pushing yourself. Sisters, sometimes they go, you know, very angry. It's not about, it's not permissible for a man to beat her, to hit her, to go himself onto her and so on, to pin her down and to rape her. No, but the whole like taking written consent or recorded or, hey, honey, can I penetrate? Yeah. Can I do this? Can, no, that's, you've already done that when you wrote, you paid your mahar, you wrote the nikah or you agreed on the nikah, you paid your mahar. It's halal. It's permissible to you to go onto your wife. Even if she has a headache, she says, mm, I don't want to right now, please leave me alone. And you still go and you go through it, right? That, that's not rape. She allowed you to. Now, you didn't pin her down. You just go, boy, you know, and then pack and come on, I'm going to do it. No. All right. There's a huge difference between the two. I hope that clarifies the issue. Again, to respond in Islam, it is not permissible to rape a woman. It is dulm. It is evil. It is someone fighting someone someone abusing someone and there's principles in the sharia that do not allow us we go based on principles we go based on rules we go based on what the prophet and the sahaba taught us not on what you know we try to extract our own selves from our minds and so on out of whatever we have to be to stand for justice even if it's against ourselves our own nafs and so on and so forth
Barakallah Fikum. Please check out the links again in the description. Support our dawah. Become a patron today. Check out my book, Journal of the New Muslim and the Muslim Alphabet Course. And DM me or book a counseling session today. Assalamu alaikum.